Hi and welcome to another of my classic licks videos for old school blues guitar. And for the month of September, we're going to take a look at some of the licks that I've learned from listening to the playing of Billy Butler. Billy Butler was a great jazz and rhythm and blues guitar player. He played behind Bill Doggett. He also had a solo career and was a session man for other people, I believe. Now, Billy Butler is an incredible guitar player, and his jazz playing is just out of this world. And I don't claim to be a jazz guitar player. In fact, you know, a lot of the stuff I hear on the Billy Butler recordings, I'm not sure what's going on. And even if I did, I'm not sure if I could play it. But I've listened to a lot of his stuff, and I picked up a lot of licks that I think are, are pretty neat and usable in electric blues or even rhythm and blues or even bordering on some jazz stuff. So in this series of lessons, I'm going to go through three different aspects of, of things that I've learned from Billy Butler's playing, three different categories of licks and ideas. I'm going to start out with double stops, which I think are the most approachable part of his playing. And then I'm going to go through some single string runs, which can add a little bit of jazz, jazzy feel to your blues guitar playing in a, in a positive way. And then wrap up with some rhythms, some bass rhythms, and also some chords, some neat chord ideas that... I'm trying to figure out and see if you can help me figure those out. We'll go through those together and some other rhythm ideas. So let's start out with this first lesson and let's take a look at double stops. And one of the really cool things about Billy Butler's playing is he mixes double stops with single string rhythms. And he also uses the double stops in a very melodic way. And starting out, we're going to take a tune called Rambunctious, which is an instrumental that Bill Doggett did. And the did. first example that I'm going to show of a Billy Butler type double stop comes from a tune called Rambunctious, which is in the key of G. And he kicks off the solo with something like this. And it's a pretty simple idea, but it's really cool and powerful. And we're playing over the first position, G bar chord, first position blues box, and we start out with my first finger on the second and third strings at the third fret, and then hammering on to the third string at the fourth fret, but picking both the third and second strings. So that's the first lick. Then I'm going to flatten my ring finger out on the fifth fret, second and third strings. Then I'm going to do this double stop here where I'm putting my second finger on the fifth fret of the second string, my ring finger on the sixth fret of the third string, and I'm sliding into this double stop at the sixth and seventh. So I'm just moving that lick from the fifth and sixth to the sixth and seventh. And that's a double stop in G. So it goes like this. string. Does it twice. And then, now he's playing over the four, which is a C. This is a C second position bar chord. So the first lick, he's got his first finger anchored up here on the second and third strings of the, of the third fret. And he's bouncing back going to the 3rd, to the 5th fret on the 2nd and 3rd strings, using his ring finger. He does this little hammer-on pull-up, going from the 3rd fret to the 5th fret. And he's picking the mostly the 3rd string, but it sounds like he's getting a little bit of the 2nd string too. You can hear that double stop in there. So the whole thing so far. to that, third, third fret, and then he does this rapid picking, the staccato picking thing, which is another Billy Butler thing, which I picked up on, and he's just going from the fifth fret, second and third string, back to the third fret, so that whole first lick. And that's a typical... Billy Butler type thing. That's from the tune called Rambunctious, and that's how he starts off his, uh, his solo. But this idea of using a... You can think of it 
think of all kinds of melody ideas to, to throw in using those. those the second lick, we're going to pick another lick from Rambunctious, so we're just going to stay in the key of G. And this is a variation on that double stop thing, which is really cool. And at one point in the solo, he does a lick that sounds like this. Something along those lines. And, and what he's doing here, he's starting now with that same double stop. On the sixth, and, uh, sixth fret of the second string, seventh fret of the third string in G. Instead of doing this, or something like this, he's going to this position. Where he's got his first finger on the third fret of the second string, ring finger on the fifth fret of the third string. Which sounds really cool. So put it all together. He's going back to this G, double stop. Now we're taking that same position, this time at the third and fourth fret, so the second and third string. And he wraps it up by just filling it out and making a, a G chord. F position, G chord, or you could have a bar, but it's easier to get to this, the F shape. So that lick, the second lick, goes like this. And he does these little single string rounds. We can, we're going to get into later, so we'll stop right there. So when you're doing a double stop, you could do and then into something else, but you could find a way to use that, that sound. It's really cool. the second example of a Billy Butler-like double stop. Example number three comes from another Bill Doggett tune called Number Three. And at the opening of the tune, there's a, a line that's played from over the five to the four to the one to the start of the song. And this has a cool idea that you could use at any point of a song if you're going from the five to the four to the one. Let me play it for you. It's also in the key of G. into the tune, which is the guitar is just playing, vamping on the chords. So what I'm doing is playing over the D, and I'm using that same double stop pattern that we did in the first example for Rambunctious. So I'm leading into it with the single string run. So playing over the five, which is a D, I'm starting here on the 10th fret of the third string, going to the 11th fret of the third string, and then 10th, 12th on the second string, and winding up on the 10th fret of the first string, which is a D. Yeah, I'm doing this slide, double stop, just like we did in Rambunctious at the beginning. Check the tab for this. Doing the same thing over the four, which is a C. And then he does the... And that is kind of a melodic thing to lead us into the into the one or the start of the first verse. And to me, it sounds like he's doing like this. Let me play it all the way through one time. So he's going, leading in with that same riff that we used to start off, but not going to the third fret of the first string. Just stopping on the fifth fret of the second string. And then he's going to play this double stop, which is a G double stop. We use this in Rambunctious. And he's going to come down on the fifth fret of the second string, and then into a G6 chord, and then start the song from there. So from this tune number three, you got this. Song. So there's our third example of Billy Butler. Fourth double example, stop. Billy Butler Double Stops, comes from a tune called Hammerhead, which is one of my favorite Bill Doggett tunes. And this is a tune in F, so the basic progression is F, 
B flat, and C. But there's a point in the song where he does chord changes. And the way I understand chord changes is a pattern of chords that you use in the, in the bridge of the song that goes like this. So if we're playing an F, we're going to go from A to D to G to C and then back to F. Back to our one. So, I think it's three, six, two, five, one on the chord pattern. Now in the tune Hammerhead, Billy Butler does this just awesome little pattern over this chord change. So if you listen to the song Hammerhead, the tune goes to this these chord changes. Over the A, let me just play it all the way through, the first part of it. So it goes like this. show you. So it's real simple. We're just playing over the chords. So we go from the, from the, from over the A, and we're playing that same rambunctious lick, but we're playing it like this. So a variation on the melody. And we slide into that double stop. So look at the tab, and you can get that pretty easily, since we've already used this basic lick. play over the next chord, which is this uh, three six, a D chord, we're going to do the same thing. This time, instead of playing, we're playing. So there's the D chord, a bar chord, second position bar chord, so we're just going back and forth between second and third strings of the fifth fret, and I'm hitting the seventh fret of the fourth string. So going second and third strings at the fifth fret to the seventh fret. Then he does this again, playing over that chord shape, but doing a series of double stops from the seventh fret to the fifth fret, first and second strings. And then the same thing, seventh to fifth fret on the second and third string. So the whole thing so far over the A. to the G, which is the 2, and then over the C, which is the, the 5, does it twice, and then he just does this descending chord, this, this is a D9 to a C9, and the C's are 5, so it's just a, a chord fancy way, instead of doing it, this, which you could do, doing the whole ninth chord. So when we were here playing over the D, we did this. And now we're going very similar type licks. So we're playing over that chord shape. And then he goes into the next part of the solo. So let's play that whole thing through. And this is showing you how Billy Butler would use these double stops and just play over the chord shapes, just like most jazz guys do, and a lot of blues guys do. So let's take it from the from the three. Cool stuff. And that's another Billy Butler type idea. And so if you're playing a tune that has chord changes like that, you can use those double stop ideas that we learned in the very first lick and move them all over the place and play them in different over different chords. Lick number five, the Billy Butler double stop. This is a really cool idea and it follows right on the heels of the last part that we did which is from the song Hammerhead in the key of F and we were following the chord changes and now I'm going to show you the next part of the solo. It's all part of the same solo. So when he finishes here, 
he's going to go back to the one, which is the F, and he's going to play this lick over the normal chord changes like this. show that one to you. So you start out here, I'm in the key of F, with this double stop. I put my first finger on the first fret, first and second strings to anchor and, and really control the lick. My pinky goes to the fourth fret of the first string and my ring finger to the third fret of the second string. And he really hammers that. And then he's going to flatten out on the third fret, first and second strings. And he's doing this where he's hammer on pull off and it sounds like he's picking the first and second strings while he's doing this but the hammer on is mostly from the first string hammering on first to third back to the first and winding up on the third fret of the second string but when you hear the recording it sounds like he's picking both strings at once he might even be I think that's it, he's hammering both strings, not just not just that one, but both first and second strings. And then winding up on the uh, third fret of the second string. That's it. So this, you could work that lick in in a lot of different ways to any solo. So. Another great Billy Butler idea. That's the last example of a, a Billy Butler double stop thing comes from a tune called Quaker City. And this is just another example of how you can vary these same basic licks. And in Quaker City, he has this part of the song where he does this, this lick like this. This is also back in the key of G. So he does this. And he moves it to the C. exactly how he wraps it up, but something like that. So we're just taking these same same ideas and just putting a little twist to it. So we're going and sliding or and just taking that lick. So we got the sixth and seventh frets of the second and third strings. And then we're going so we're starting on the fifth fret, second and third strings. Picking up twice picking the second and third frets of the second and third strings. So it's like this. And then when we're coming back into the, the G double stop, we're going one step below. So we're going from the second and third strings to the third and fourth strings. So that whole leg. C, just play it over the C, bar chord, back to the G, then he does kind of a Chuck Berry, something like that, and then you can do a lot of different wrap-ups there. So Quaker City, there's just another example of how he uses that same same basic double stop positions and mixes it up and gets another really cool rhythmic idea which you can move over any basic over any key. 
So there are six examples of some Billy Butler type double stops. None of those are extremely difficult to play, pretty easy to play, but yet they sound cool. And especially as we get into the single string rhymes, you'll see how Billy Butler mixed those double stops with the lots of really cool single string ideas, and that's what we're going to get into next.